Welcome back to another PFF Podcast Shorts. I'm Mike Renner. Joining me with all the linebackers here is our linebacker scout for 2017 draft, Josh Liskowitz. We're talking about Florida linebacker Jared Davis, one of the most explosive linebackers I've ever seen, to be honest, coming out of college. What jumps out of you the tape when you would turn him on, Josh? Uh, Besides the explosiveness, let's say. Sure. Obviously, that's, obviously, that pops out right away. But what else do you see in his game? There's no question about that. And obviously, when you see a guy that's that kind of all-around athlete, not just the explosiveness, but, I mean, he can do everything you want as an athlete. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably going to lead to him being drafted a little bit higher than his play has warranted the, so the far. dreaded you were upside. He's got that upside. Yeah, I, I wanted because to stay away from it. your favorite word. But, <laughs> yes, he definitely has the upside. And so I, I think a team's going to fall in love with him at the bottom of the first round because of it. But, you know, the, there are some weaknesses in this game. Mm-hmm. I, I think the biggest thing with him is he needs to learn how to let his athleticism work for him. Okay. In terms of he's overrunning plays, he missed tackles, he's going 100 miles per hour to the ball or where he thinks the ball is, and it'll end up in him taking bad angles – Missing tackles, like we said. Uh, he'll miss diagnosing coverage, and then he'll leave himself really vulnerable. I, I think it needs to, the mental process needs to slow down and catch up to his athleticism a little bit. Once he melts the two, he could be a really, really good player. That was, the way you described it was absolutely perfect, saying he's 100 miles per hour from as soon as he starts going. He's at a standstill, standstill, and then it's 100 miles per hour, whether it's into a block, whether it's chasing down a quarterback, whether it's chasing down you know a wide receiver in space. Like you said, you really can't do that in the NFL. You're going to get some terrible angles. You're going to get absolutely shook out of your shoes if you can't play with balance, if you can't come to balance and, make, and you know, end up finishing a tackle. He wants to go that big hit every time. He wants to go blow up that offensive lineman every time. And sometimes he gets caught looking at the offensive lineman and running back goes right through the gap he was mm-hmm. supposed to be in. So that stuff is very concerning, but you can't teach that kind of explosiveness that he had. 38 and a half inch vertical at 238 pounds, four, five, six, forty. I mean, he has the size that you probably want at the linebacker position, 238 pounds, like I said, six foot one with long arms. All those boxes get checked. So is that going to be enough for him to overcome, like you said, those sort of deficiencies that he had? Can you shore up those deficiencies that, that he has right now? Can you teach him to slow down some degree? That's going to be the great debate in pretty much every lock or every locker room, every front office that's considering him. Um, and I think he's going to be one of those guys where the scouts that have seen him all year, all the last couple of years, are going to have some real concern there. But then the coaches are going to come in. And they're just going to see all those tools, and mm-hmm. they're going to say, "I can fix him. I can do. I can do oh, all yeah. these things with him." Every coach can fix everything, yeah. right? <laughs> well, exactly. And and it, it's it's one of those things where the two have to come together, uh, because I I do think there's ultimately there's going to be coaches that absolutely fall in love with with him and his potential uh, when you see him in coverage. You know, there like we said, there are times when when he'll jump things, he'll get a little bit lost. But at, at the same time, you see his ability to close and break down on everything in front of him. He's got enough physicality and size and length, like as you mentioned, mm-hmm. thirty three and a half inch arms, which is ridiculous for yeah, a linebacker. For yeah, it's crazy. And he can do all that too. So if he can help you in all three phases, that's going to be huge for teams. Yeah, I think the. Why I'd feel safe picking him, like you said, at the end of the first round, and why I don't think it's a huge risk, even though he hasn't graded out extremely well over the past years. He's nowhere Mm -hmm. close to someone like Ruben Foster in terms of grading. But what he can do from a man coverage perspective, if you're a team that runs a lot of man coverage, I would take him in a heartbeat because he can stick in a linebacker, in a excuse me, a tight end's hip pocket. He can. He can react to a running back on a you know an option route. He can stay with them every step of the way when that's just rare at the linebacker position. You don't find 238-pound guys who can do that. And so at that point, he has so much value in that perspective that some of those questions about him in the run game, some of those questions about him missing tackles sort of fade for me. And I just think this guy's going to be what the NFL position demands at linebacker today. I, I think the coverage points are, are very valid. And he has graded very well in coverage the last couple of years, especially in 2015 when he was healthy all season. 
uh, outstanding coverage grade from us, certainly one of our top uh, off the ball linebackers in that regard. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit uh, back when we did the Ruben Foster short. Mm-hmm. That needs to be a point of emphasis in the NFL. Backers have to be able to cover, especially if you look at this year's tight end class. It's a ridiculous class. Teams more and more are trying to create mismatches at that position in the middle, trying to get them on linebackers. And if you have a linebacker that's able to get that kind of depth, uh, that's able to play man coverage, press coverage in the face of these tight ends, that is absolutely huge. You're taking away a huge advantage that the offense generally has over the defense right now. Yeah, I've really come around in the few short years since I've even been at PFF, you know, five years, going up on five years now in terms of what I value. Basically, every position on defense to me now, uh, besides nose tackle, is a pass first position. You have mm-hmm. to be a pass first. As a defensive lineman, you have to be able to rush the passer. As a linebacker, you have to be able to cover and play man coverage. And as a, a safety or a cornerback, if you can't cover, I don't care. You know, that doesn't, I don't want you on the team. I don't care how good you are versus the run. I need you to be able to play in coverage at a high level if I'm taking you in the first round. And so he has those sort of abilities that he can do that. He does, there's some issues with him in coverage. He falls asleep in zones at times. Like he'll get caught watching the quarterback, but the things he does have, you really can't teach. So where does he end up going when it's all said and done in this draft? Uh, like I said earlier, I think he's going to end up going somewhere in the 20s. I think I really think he's going to go that high. Uh, you look at a team like Detroit, mm-hmm. that really doesn't so have any linebackers, linebackers yeah. at all right now. They really don't have any. Um, they could go a number of different ways, but taking a supreme athlete like that, that can help in coverage. I mean, how bad was Detroit in coverage last year with mm-hmm. their linebackers? Just absolutely atrocious. They had the worst coverage linebacker, middle linebacker, in the game last year. <laughs> it, it, there's no other oh, way to they, sugar that. would that. be – yeah, that would be basically somewhat similar to what they had in DeAndre Levy. Obviously, like, projection-wise, but DeAndre Levy is that sort of explosive athlete mm-hmm. who was nasty as a blitzer, could cover in man coverage, could play the run, take on blocks, that sort of thing. He could develop into that player when it's all said and done. Jared Davis could. I think you even look at so many teams in the 20s could use a guy like him. Uh, Miami, the Giants, Oakland, uh, Green Bay. There's just, there's that, even Pittsburgh could use a linebacker at this point. There's so many teams where, and then New Orleans to cap out the end of the first round. I don't think he makes it to round two, considering how many of those teams really need a linebacker at this point. Yeah, you mentioned Miami, and I love that. They've done a little bit this offseason to trying to shore up that linebacking core. But when you think about the fact that they have to go against New England twice a year, mm-hmm. you know, that's an issue. They, yeah. they need to you be able to find a linebacker that has some ability to potentially cover Gronk because I'm not going to pretend and that even, he's going to come in here and just do it. But. The running backs. Well, well right, of course. Know, and, That's a great point, too. Lewis. I mean, those guys are constantly in there. And if he can if he can rally forward to improve their coverage with that, that's huge. Oakland, they had Malcolm Smith last year, did not grade well at all in coverage. Mm-hmm. That's that, that defense, that team is very, very close. They get a very competent co- uh, coverage backer. How much is that going to help that pass rush, which is all already very good? Mm-hmm. That could be like the missing link to that defense. I definitely agree. I think that's where he ends up going. But he goes there. If he doesn't end up being a dynamic coverage player, if he's not, you know, if he's not a successful pick there late in the first round, why do you think that is? Why, If he doesn't succeed, why would it be? I, I think we've kind of uh, hinted that this is a potential with him, but I, I think uh, instincts could end up being the issue if he's just that rabid dog mm-hmm. that just attacks the first thing he sees and he, and he never learns to break down in space, to follow his keys better both against the run and the pass. Uh, I think that's where he could get himself into trouble and not ever – really uh, realize his full potential. I agree. There's definitely, in my mind, a pretty huge chasm between Reuben Foster and Jared Davis at this point. Mm -hmm. Foster's just far more of a sure thing. Jared Davis, a lot of projection still to his game, but there's a lot of tools to like there. As many tools as there to like about Foster. I mean, he's got all the physical tools that Foster has, if not more. So... There you have it. That's our take on Jared Davis. Make sure to tune in back into PFF for all of our podcast shorts. You guys have a good one.